Sutruvacha Ityupa Mantito Ragya Guna Nukatane Hare Nishikesha Manus Mritya Pratibaktum Prachakrame Sutruvacha Sudaruvacha, Sudha Goswami said, it is thus, Upamantrita being requested, Radhya by the king, Guna Anukatane, in describing the transcendental attributes of the Lord. Hare of the personality of Godhead, Rishikesham, the master of the senses, Anusmritya, properly remembering, Pativaktum, just to reply, Aprachakrame, executed the preliminaries. Translation. Sudha Goswami said, when Sukadeva Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the personality of Godhead, he then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna, and to reply properly, he spoke thus. Translation, please repeat. Sudha Goswami said, when Sukadeva Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the personality of Godhead. He then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna. And to reply properly, he spoke thus. The devotees of the Lord, while delivering speeches and describing the transcendental attributes of the Lord, do not think that they can do anything independently. They think that they can speak only what they are induced to speak by the Supreme Lord, the Master of the Senses. The senses of the individual being are not his own. The devotee knows that such senses belong to the Supreme Lord and, and that they can be properly uh, used when they are employed for the service of the Lord. The senses are instruments and elements are ingredients, all endowed by the Lord. Therefore, whatever an individual can do, speak, see, etc., is under the direction of the Lord only. Bhagavad Gita 15.15 confirms this. Sarvasachayam riti shani vishtumata shmiti jnanam aponam cha. No one is free to act freely and independently. And as such, one should always seek the permission of the Lord to act or eat or speak. And by the blessing of the Lord, everything done by a devotee is beyond the principles of the four defects typical of the conditioned soul. Sudha Uvacha, it upa mantito ragya guna nu katane hare, rishikesham anusmitya prativaktum prachakrame. Sudha Goswami said, when Sukadev Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the personality of God, he then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna, and to reply properly, he spoke thus. <coughs> so, uh, Sutta Uvacha, Sutta Goswami is uh, uh, giving this uh, account of when uh, King Parikit asked Sukadev Goswami about, uh, well, to describe the creative energy as mentioned here of the personality of God. And uh, and then Sukadev Goswami, he systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna. So uh, Prabhupada gives very instructive, uh, he makes a very instructive statement here that all devotees uh, should remember this, that uh, while delivering speeches, 
describing trans attributes of the Lord. So when someone is giving a speech or giving a lecture or giving a seminar or just speaking in general, uh, they should always remember, anyone who's a devotee, uh, should always remember that actually uh, it is only by the blessings of the Supreme Personality of God that they're able to speak uh, something uh, appropriately, nicely uh, about the Personality of God, about the energies, the process of creation, the devotees of the Lord, the different leelas, all these different uh, aspects of the Personality of Godhead uh, are, are by the blessings of Krishna one can begin to describe them. So a devotee, uh, no matter what stage a devotee is on, whether beginning devotee or very, very advanced devotee like we see here in Sukadeva Goswami, very, very advanced, but still uh, he is not thinking that by his, <coughs> uh, by his ability by his intellectual uh, uh, prowess uh, and uh, that he is actually uh, describing these things. He is, and the same with, um, I remember uh, last week I was uh, giving the class and I mentioned that in Bhagavad Gita where uh, Krishna asked Arjuna when he heard all the topics that he was describing, the yoga, the karma, and all, all the different uh, topics that Krishna was uh, describing and instructing him on. Did he pay attention to all that? Did he remember all that? Uh, is his illusion, yatakito, uh, uh, what is that verse? Nastamo shmiti labda tattvasada manasutaita. Did he remember all these things? Is he, uh, was his illusion uh, dispelled, ignorance dispelled? And uh, Arjuna answered, Nasta Moha Shmiti Labda, Tat Prasada, Tat Prasada, yes. Uh, by uh, your mercy uh, and by your speaking, uh, my ignorance is dispelled, my illusion is gone. Uh, prasada, prasada, prasada means by your mercy. But, and, and, but Arjuna didn't think, yes, Krishna, yes, yes, I've listened to what you have said, but you know, I knew these things already, and uh, you didn't really have to speak that much, uh, you know. And uh, you know, uh, and sometimes we, we, we when we we're speaking uh, uh, with someone. Yes, uh, uh, yes, what you have said is nice. I am knowing these things already. <laughs> I am knowing these things already. So Arjuna was not like that. He was very humble. And, and he said that by your mercy, I was able to concentrate. And by your mercy, by your blessings, I was able to remember. And by your blessings, my ignorance is gone. My illusion is, is dispelled. By, so Arjuna, even though a very exalted personality, he was very humble. And he attributed his ignorance being dispelled and his illusion being removed to Krishna. Not that by his own independent power. This is the point that is being made here by Srila Prabhupada <coughs> in this uh, uh, verse today. That the devotee thinks like this. This is how a real devotee thinks. Uh, you know, someone else can talk about Krishna, uh, someone who's not a devotee. You know, there are many uh, uh, scholars who study the ancient literatures and so on, Bhagavad Gita, ancient literatures, and they speak about Lord Rama and they speak about Krishna, but it's like academic, it's intellectual. And, uh, they're, and they're, of course, they're thinking by, by studying uh, and uh, researching and studying these things, I'm, uh, you know, able to... Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I remember and, in, and, and now I'm giving some information about that and they attribute that presentation to their own abilities uh, and, 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 and by their uh, <coughs> speaking uh, uh, others hear but the effect uh, so one, one thing is the actual mentality of presenting it and, the, uh, uh, and there's a difference between a materialist and a spiritualist Spiritualist always is, is, is very, uh, feel, uh, very uh, fortunate to be helped and un not only sentimentally, uh, understands how this is happening because 
here in this, this verse, uh, Prabhupada quotes from this uh, Savasya, uh, 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 what is that verse? Uh, uh, yes, Savasya Cham Rudi Shani Vishto Mata Shmiti Gyanam Apona Cha Vedas Cha. Savya Ham Eva Vidyo Vedanta Kid Vedit Cha Ham. This is a verse from Bhagavad Gita. When I am seated in everyone's heart, from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Uh, now, also, Prabhupada, uh, it is mentioned here, Rishi Kesham. There's one famous verse from uh, um, uh, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Savo padi vini muktam tat padapena nilmanam. Rishi Kesham. Rishi Kesham. Sevanam Bhakti Uchate. Uh, that uh, uh, Rishi Kesha, the master of the senses. Now, <coughs> Uh, Krishna is the master of the senses and, and all the different expansions of Krishna, they are the masters. And but specifically, Prabhupada refers to this verse from Bhagavad Gita, Savasa Cham, Ridi Shani Vishnu. He refers to Paramatma. And uh, he says that, the Prabhupada says, the Paramatma in everyone's heart, uh, it is from him that all activity, it is from him that all activities are initiated. So this is Rishi, Rishi Kesha means the master of the sense. And here it is mentioned about the, uh, the senses, all our senses of the body, our eyes, ears and, and tongue and nose and all, they're all like instruments that we use to uh, interact with the outside world and to gather knowledge and uh, we gather knowledge and we interact, we, 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 we experience certain things by these senses. The senses are also subtle too, they're also the mind, our mind, there's a material mind, it's subtle, it's not as gross as the eye and the ear, but it's, the mind is subtle, the intellect uh, but these are all material ingredients uh, that, uh, that uh, come when someone enters a material body. Everyone gets that. Everyone gets a certain type of eye, certain type of ear, and they're different for every species. You know, a crocodile will have their particular eyes, and, and uh, the, the mouse will have their particular eye, and so on and so forth. But every, uh, uh, <clears throat> every species of life and in that particular body has these instruments of the senses, both the gross and subtle. And then on top of that, there is the objects that the senses interact with. Now both the senses, gross and subtle, and the objects are provided by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Both of them. The senses and the objects. And uh, the Lord accompanying the, in, in this body of ours, there's the, we are as the soul, and next to us is Paramatma, is the super soul, the supreme soul. He is within every species of life, every, and he's accompanying the individual soul. And he upadashta numantacha batabuktam heshwara paramatmeti chapitu dehismin purushapara. There is another in the body that is providing all the uh, necessities and the ability to do even the smallest things uh, with this body and with this world. So uh, the, 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 it is mentioned that the, the Paramatma, he oversees, he's witnessing, but it's not just passive, he's actually initiating. Now, in everyone's heart, the Paramatma, and all activities are initiated, even in this body, even in our own bodies are initiated by, by Paramatma. So Rishi Kesha, uh, is, can refer to all Krishna and to all the expansions of Krishna. They're all, but specifically Paramatma. Paramatma. Because in every body, every species of life, He is allowing us. We're, we're in the body and we're thinking that we're doing all these things. Certainly we are doing these things, but even to uh, uh, initiate that activity. And uh, interestingly enough, the Prabhupada says, the Supreme Lord is so full uh, that for the conditioned soul, he is the supplier and he's also the digester of the food stuff. So in other words, when we get our food from the outside, who is supplying that? Really it grows, and, you know, the fruits and so on and so forth, uh, uh, the vegetables and things. I mean, we may do things to grow, but you know, who is, who is supplying all things? That is the Supreme Personality. So he's supplying all this, and when they come in our body, Prabhupada goes so far as to say uh, that uh, digesting the food 
And Krishna says also in another place in Bhagavad Gita, I'm the fire of the digestion. So we are, th- we are eating and we're doing, we're, we're initiating all these activities of digestion and this, but how much control ha- do we have over digestion and this, you know, now I'm going to, when we order the body, now I'm going to digest. <laughs> the body, it's like going on auto- automatically, the body does digestion. So who's enabling all that? Now here, Savasacham Rudishani Vashto, Prabhupada is saying, that is Paramatma who's enabling it. He's supplying it, supplying the food stuff, and he's enabling the digestion of it. So Paramatma is very active. He's both passive and active. He's overseeing, he's witnessing everything. He knows everything. He knows more about you than you know. Right? We think we know about ourselves, but how much do we actually really know? We do things that where did that come from? Right? We do things that surprise ourselves. We th- I thought I knew myself, but gee, I did that. Right? So we surprise our own selves. But Krishna knows everything because Krishna goes back. Now we remember in this life where, you know, but we don't remember the past life, the one before that, the one before that, the one before that. But Krishna knows. So all these thoughts and, and everything, and the, the exp- this is all being shaped from so many lives. Krishna knows all that. So he knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows all the things that happened before, what you thought, and how it's all come to this point, and, and so on and so forth. So this, this is very important. So uh, the devotees don't just sentimentally, uh, um, oh, well, God, I just, uh, but understand why uh, we seek the blessings of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in doing anything. Even in eating, Prabhupada even says, here he says that in the form he gives knowledge, he's the witness, he's the teacher, and even in seeing, or here in this verse, even in, in, in seeing or eating, uh, the, the, the devotees acknowledge actually it is Krishna uh, uh, initiating and, uh, and, and, uh, and arranging all these things, even our eating, our seeing. So, therefore, when we, when, whatever, as far as a devotee, whatever we do, uh, we seek the uh, the, the blessings of Rishikesha. Sava Parivini Muktam Tat Paratvena Nilma. Rishikesha, Rishikesha. Semana Bhakti Uchate. And therefore, Semana Bhakti Uchate, therefore we engage those senses, seek the blessings uh, 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 in the service of the Supreme Personality of God. And this comes to the point here at the end of this purport, the Prabhupada says here. That when one does like that, the senses are purified and, and in this Savo Pari Vini Muktam, Savo Pari, there's Upari, there's designation. But when our minds and intellect and all our senses, understanding Krishna's position, especially as Paramatna, we recognize the Lord, how he initiates, how he arranges, therefore we, we, we offer our obeisances to him and we seek his blessings in doing anything. And, 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 and then when we do that, our senses, our mind, and then the senses are purified, then this identification with the, the dualities of the material world, designations of our work or our uh, family, our country, I am a this and I am a that, they automatically disappear because one is rightly fixed in what their true designation is. So this is the right use of the senses, actually. This is not very well understood or known by the materialists because they think they they are the doers of everything and it's like they don't understand on a deeper level. Uh, so this is the right use, the right use of a thing. Uh, so j- just like Prabhupada gives the example, just like <clears throat> there's a wallet lying in the street, uh, and now someone will go over there, take the wallet, and run off. Another person will say, just ignore it. Another person will say, they will pick up the wallet. <coughs> Look inside. Oh, this is it belongs to such and such, and then they seek out that and they return it to that person. So, which one, do you, in your opinion, is is the best person? The, best. Huh? the one who returns it, understanding this is not mine. This is, belongs to someone else. The first one just ran off with it. I remember actually uh, just a few days I was reading out in Perth. They, there's these people, of course, they work in there when all the all the sewage comes down, it comes down on conveyor belts and stuff, things like that. So this, this whole bunch of money came down. <laughs> and there was a lot of it. <laughs> there was a, whole, a lot of people working in there and it was like tens of thousands of dollars. Somehow or other it got into the sewage, right? This was in Perth just a few days ago. And so between themselves they all like divided it up. 
<laughs> and just pocketed it and, 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 and went home with it, right? But one of the group dobbed them in, <laughs> right, to the police. One of them group dobbed them in. They didn't feel right or whatever it was. They, they dobbed them in and then the police came, they ran them all up and, and, and retrieved the money and charged them for theft. Charged them for theft and they have to go to court and the whole thing. Right? They got charged for, 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 with stealing that money because it didn't belong to them. They just took it. They should have found out who it actually belonged to because maybe somehow or other it fell down the toilet or something like that. Ended up in the sewage anyway. So uh, interesting. So uh, uh, I just thought it was an interesting story <laughs> because, yes, they should, what they should have done uh, was actually find out who it belonged to. So this is the this is the, 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 the topmost person. So a devotee is like that. The devotee recognizes actually everything is comes from Krishna and therefore we utilize it. And, and, and by doing so, the side effect is we're purified, the designations, uh, you know, the the uh, <coughs> attachment to so many things just dissipates by being purified, by doing things in the right way and by connecting with Krishna. So this is very, very important here. Uh, uh, for this verse, uh, and Prabhupada uh, very uh, uh, nicely points this out, the specific understanding, Sabasa Chamri Shani Vishto, who is this? The, the word uh, Rishi, Rishi Kesham is used, uh, Anusmitya, properly remembering. So in this particular instance, Sukadev Goswami, he was speaking, so before he spoke he was remembering the, the Supreme Personality of God. In other words, he was seeking the blessings to speak. So all, all, all of us devotees who speak, as, as I said in the beginning, give lectures, seminar, whatever we do, or just speak privately, we should always remember, uh, don't, you know, don't think that I'm such a wonderful person, I'm such a wonderful speaker or lecturer or seminar giver, I'm so great, you know, and someone says, oh, that was so wonderful, and you go, well, thank you very much, or, you know, I deserved it, you know, and, you know, you think like that, no. Uh, no, one is very humble. It is only by the mercy of my guru, Krishna, that I'm able to even speak like that. So, a devotee always uh, understand this point. A very, very important point for any any one of us who's, who's speaking, uh, as I said, lecturing or giving seminar, whatever. So they think they can only speak only when they are induced to speak. They are induced to speak by the Supreme Lord, the Master of the Senses, the Master of the Senses, Rishi Kesh. So, uh, important point. Uh, and this brings me to another uh, uh, mm, uh, a point in the, in the regard to... Today is uh, also the uh, uh, appearance anniversary of Sri Gadada Pandit. And Gadada Pandit, of course, Panchatatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Sarupakam Bhakta Bhattana Namami Bhakta Chaktikam. He is the in- incarnation of Srimati Radharani. Gadada Pandit. But Gadada Pandit, there's a Gadada Tattva. Sometimes the Acharyas refer to it as Gadada Tattva even because it's a little Gadada Pandit as Radharani in Chaitanya Leela is different, a little bit different mood than Radharani in Krishna Leela. And uh, of course Gadada Pandit, it's his appearance and why I bring it up because this, uh, he, when he, when Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Puri, <coughs> took sannyas and went to Jagannath Puri, uh, Gadada Pandit accompanied him. And he was living in this uh, Yameshwara Tota. Tota means uh, in uh, 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 his uh, garden and uh, nearby the sea. He was living there. And every afternoon he would give lectures from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and Lord Chaitanya would come. <coughs> along with a few other devotees, to hear those lectures. And the lectures were, you know, from all, all many places in the Bhagavatam. Uh, uh, you know, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one time when he came, and, uh, and Gadara was starting to speak about uh, Krishna Leela and Radharani, he, he called out, where is my prana? Where is the Lord of uh, the life of my Lord? Where is he? And he started to dig down. Where is he? Where is he? And as he was digging down, uh, you know, at the top of a murti uh, was revealed. Many of you have been to Tota Gopinath Temple in Jagannath Puri. And uh, the, 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 these stories are told there, of course. So he was... 
he was uh, digging down, and and, and the, the, the the crown of the the murti was, uh, and uh, and uh, and he called out to. He said, "Gadai, I have found something we're very wonderful here. <laughs> Help me dig." And so they dug and they dug and they dug, and then and then uh, Lord Chaitanya had the murti of God, and he named the deity Gopina. He actually named it Gopina, Gopi, the Lord of the uh, the Lord and the life of the Gopis. He named it Gopina. And because it was in a Toto, in a garden area, he later be, became known as Toto Gopina. Toto Gopina. And so, uh, and then, of course, they uh, uh, installed that. Did he actually told Gadara Pandit that uh, you should stay here and render service to this deity your whole life? Don't go anywhere else. So in that way, we know the story of Gadada that he accepted what's known as Chetra Sanyas. Chetra Sanyas is a sanyas, you take sanyas and you, you just, uh, your vow is to just stay in that one place called Chetra Sanyas. You don't go other places. And he said, you stay here and you worship Toda Gopina. Uh, but interestingly, he was giving the Bhagavatam. So, uh, of course, Gadada Pandit <coughs> appeared, some say a few years after Lord Chaitanya appeared, some say just one year. So he appeared in uh, his father's name when Mar Mar Madhva Mishra and his mother's name were Ratnavati. And they lived nearby Satchimata. And Satchimata and Ratnavati were like sisters. And Gadada and uh, Nimai were inseparable, especially in their young years. Inseparable. Sometimes Gadada would go over to Satchimata's place and play with Nimai. Sometimes Nimai would go over to Gadada's place and play with uh, Gadada. So they are very, very inseparable. But Gadada Tattva means that his mood was different. Uh, now, there's very technical information here, but in the spiritual world, there's what's called Dakshina Gopis and, uh, and uh, Vama Gopis. Dakshina Gopis is those who are very submissive to Krishna, very submissive, and they just want to please Krishna, whatever he likes, they do that. <laughs> Then there's Vama Gopis who are a bit more aggressive and they don't always agree with Krishna and they argue with Krishna sometimes. And of course Krishna likes that a little bit, that intensifies the flavor a little bit more. <laughs> so so Radharani is like in that group there and, uh, and she's the head of that group and, and there's Gopis like that. Now when Krishna wanted to taste the love of, 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 of Srimati Radharani, some say that he stole that bhava. Now there's different levels of bhava, ruda, aniruda, uh, adiruda, and, and all different levels of bhava, more intensities and, and flavors and qualities. And, uh, but there's, only, well, there's one bhava that only Radharani experiences, not even Lalita Vishaka experiences, called, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, um, uh, Madanakya, uh, Madanakya bhava, Madanakya Mahabhava. Manaki Mahabhava. It is a bhava which happens when when Krishna when Radha is feeling separation, Vipralamba, intense separation between when she's away from Krishna, uh, and then and then she meets Krishna at that moment when they meet. So only Radharani and, and, and Krishna wanted to, to experience all of Radha's bhava and love, but especially he wanted to taste that particular one. That that particular bhava when they just meet at that point. So he specifically wanted to taste that. So some Acharyas say that he stole that whole bhava from Radha. <laughs> Krishna stole and came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Gadada Pandit, he came, he was Radharani, and uh, he came, he was, and, and, but was exhibiting the bhava that was left after Krishna had stolen the other bhava. <laughs> so he wasn't uh, a varma, he wasn't a right wing, he, was, he wasn't a left wing, he displayed more the mood of Rukmini, they very submissive, and his mood, and he covered, so he knew Krishna's purpose. So even though he was Radha, he knew Krishna's purpose to taste the love, especially, especially this Mahabhava platform. Of that that particular love, he knew Krishna's purpose, so he came at just a very uh, as in, in almost in a dasya ras, as a servant to to enhance that mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to taste that, those particular aspects of. It. So he was very very submissive. Uh, uh, he was very quiet. Uh, he never argued with Lord Chaitanya, even though sort of, and Lord Chaitanya would taunt him sometimes, just just to try to bring out that 
that aggressive <laughs> in nature of Rada. <laughs> uh, but he would just not react. <laughs> he would not react. And he was ne not very uh, fond of Nimai when he was young, especially in his student days when he was very precocious and he would make fallacious lo logic arguments with his students. And so uh, uh, Garada would stay at a distance and then young childhood that would be all inseparable. But later on when he grew, when Nimai grew up as a student, he would stay at a distance. He didn't like that kind of you know, facetiousness and, 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 and so on and so forth. But uh, Nimai would always search him out and bring him in. And he said, I know you're trying to, you, you don't like this and you're keeping but in the future, <coughs> uh, I will become such a great Vaishnava <coughs> that even Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva will come to my house. <laughs> so later on, actually, the whole thing changed when, uh, when uh, Lord Chaitanya went to Gaia and took initiation from Ishwara Puri. When he came back, he was a different person. Like a different, that, that mood of ecstatic love of Prem. And then, of course, Gadada was very uh, ecstatic that Lord Chaitanya was like that. And so he was associating him uh, very carefully. Of course, Gadara Pandit, he took initiation from Pundarik Vidyanidhi. That's a whole story there, Pundarik, who was none other than King Vishabhanu. So Radha in the form of Gadara Pandit and, Pundar and, and, and Vishabhanu in the form of Pundarik, the father gave yeah, initiation to the daughter like that, but in Chaitanya Leela. A very wonderful story. Uh, 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 so today's the and the anniversary of the appearance of Gadada Pandit. But uh, for us as devotees, uh, it's good to understand this different mood of Gadada. It's called, actually called Gadada Tattva. Uh, and that, in, in that, uh, uh, that different mood. So uh, his mood was more to observe, examine. And then, of course, that very famous story when you go to Toto Gopinath, everyone knows the deity, the deity is sitting which is the only deity of Krishna in the world who is actually sitting down playing a flute. He's sitting down. And uh, uh, now it is said that later on, it is said that there are different accounts how Lord Chaitanya left this world. Some say he disappeared into Jagannath. Some say he ran into the ocean searching for Krishna. He disappeared in the ocean. But the more accepted uh, uh, explanation is that he's last, he went to Gundicha temple and then uh, he disappeared, uh, everyone was looking for him. Then an outer garment was found in front of the deity of Tota Gopinath. Uh, Lord Chaitanya's outer garment was found there and uh, actually it said he entered the knee of and, and, and when you go there you can actually, sometimes when you go there that, that the Pujari will show you there's a line there, uh, a golden line where it said that Lord Chaitanya entered the deity of Tota Gopinath. So when Lord Chaitanya entered the deity of Tota Gopinath <coughs> when he disappeared from the world, it is said that Gadada Pandit all of a sudden became very old. Even though, now, Lord Chaitanya disappeared uh, when he was 48, and, 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 and Gadada was 47. Uh, and so, all of a sudden, he became very thin, very pale. He was in, in separation from Lord Chaitanya, very, very thin and pale, and, and just grew very old. He was worshipping the deity, but he couldn't perform the worship. And he would try to reach up even to put a garland on, the, and he couldn't do it because he some, you know, became that old. And then, then he, then at, if then he had a thought, maybe I should get some other pujari to it because now I can't do it. And so, it is said at night, Lord Gopinath came to him in a dream and said, that, "Why are you thinking like that? I only want you to render service to me." Uh, and, but I can't, and there's a whole conversation, you can read this conversation, but I can't, I can't, I, now I'm gone old all of a sudden, and I can't even reach up, I can't do any of the, the service and everything like that. He said, don't worry, tomorrow when you come, you'll see, I'll make myself smaller so that you can reach me. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, and so from that time when, when uh, uh, Gadada went there, the deity, when you go there, you can see the sitting Gopinath. Uh, he's sitting down playing the flute, so that in that way. Uh, but uh, uh, just a short time after that, um, uh, Gadada Pandit uh, also disappeared from the world. It, it was just like a year, a year later, or something like that. And the story is that he also disappeared into the Gopinath deity like that. So today is the anniversary of uh, of uh, Gadada Pandit. Uh, so I thought I'd mention that story as well. So Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I'll read this verse again. Sudha Goswami said, When Sugadev Goswami was thus requested by the king to describe the creative energy of the personality of God, he then systematically remembered the master of the senses, Sri Krishna, and to reply properly, he spoke thus. 
Anyone has a question or comment? Uh, Sudden. Yes. Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, we've got, we've got just get that mic over there. Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, uh, it's a bit I really appreciate you speaking on God of Thunder. Oh, yeah. And um, I hadn't actually heard um, that um, you know, that uh, he took the mood of the, the, do you call them the left wing and the right wing? No, right. Yeah, yeah so mm. I've never heard that before. Oh, so that's yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, but I have a question for you. If I go to Trump class now, it's, it's maybe a little bit of a joke, but. Um, a little so bit of a... A joke. A joke. But I'm going to say that anyhow. Um, so, if you get fat, is that Christian's fault? Because you were talking about he's in charge of all the senses and all that. Can you blame him for being a bit overweight? <laughs> well, you know, I thought someone might ask something like that. <laughs> And therefore, I just, uh, we, you know, we have to read the purple. Was it? The devotees of the Lord, while delivering speeches and describing the transcendental attributes of the Lord, <laughs> when they do that, <laughs> when they deliver speeches and describe the transcendental attributes of the Lord, they do not think they can do anything independently. Of course, you know, uh, uh, um, wh what are you asking? Are you asking, well, did you ask Krishna that if you could get fat? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you, what, specifically what are you asking? Well, if Krishna are you blaming Krishna because you're becoming fat? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't blame. You know, we have, you know, along with Krishna, we have our own desires, so, and we, we, and our, through our desires, we act in certain ways. But and and, and so Krishna allows that. So uh, uh, um, and and then so we act in a certain way. We overeat and. And uh, we get fat. <laughs> I don't think they can, I can say nothing, nothing, much more to that. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say that um, similarly as he gives us the ability to speak, he also um, is it, very much to service. You can see that I like, think you do something that's really wonderful, like something happens. And people are happy by your service and say, well, actually, Krishna did that. Like, he just somehow empowered me to be able to produce that service. Right. Because so he also, but he is in charge of that. Mm -hmm. Like, when you do really good stuff, it's like, yeah, he did that. Yeah. Well, I mean, to say there's all different levels of devotees. And so Krishna reciprocates accordingly. So when one is a very high advanced devotee, he's always seeking Krishna's blessings and permission. And so his life is totally in the charge of Krishna. So if something happens to that devotee, then Krishna is directly involved in that. But then there are lesser levels of devotees who are sometimes surrendering to Krishna or recognizing Krishna and so on and so on. So Krishna reciprocates according to that as well. So then, you know, when, thing, when, uh, they're, they're, when the devotee is very much, uh, you know, in line with Krishna, but other times the devotee is not, but Krishna makes adjustments there. So, uh, you know, sometimes it is a direct inducement from Krishna and other times it's, uh, he allows you to fulfill your desire, you know, not in, in completely in, in connection with him. And so therefore, you become fat. <laughs> I was going to say, the justice system fails, not his fault. Of course, I know all about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the thing is that, you know, you, you, you did something. Uh, well, you know, sometimes people say, like, you know, well, why did God allow like this? But you could uh, also say, well, did you ask God first? You know, did you ask God first before you did? Why did God allow that? But did you ask God before you did that? You know, you want to do things and then certain things happen. Oh, why did God? But you didn't ask God before you did that activity. But that's the difference between, you know, materialists, of course, and, and, and of course, even beginning devotees, uh, but, and, and very great devotees, great devotees, are just always in tune with Krishna. They never do anything that the Krishna doesn't sanction. So, so therefore, they're, they're, that's another level. But for us, mixed devotees, where we're going along the path, therefore, you know, did we actually consult with Krishna before we did that? Uh, you know, is that Krishna? That is 
uh, uh, giving that result? Or, or, of course, Krishna gives every result, but did he hand it in an, in an indirect way over to the material energy to give that result? So there's direct result from Krishna and indirect. So sometimes we think like that. You know, I, I told the story a while ago about that devotee who, who dreamt of, he went to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, you know, I had a dream about you last night. <clears throat> and uh, you said I, you know, I should do this and I should do that. And Prabhupada said that mm, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he said that was just maybe your mind or some Buddha who said that. That's the Prabhupada ki dai go premanandi hari hari